Hello folks and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be having some fun with ZVM. I have not uh, many videos about VM or ZVM so far in this channel. I have one video about VM370, the very old precursor of the precursor of the precursor of ZVM, uh, which then IPLs uh, MVS underneath it and uh, we had some fun with that about a year ago uh, but I've had a bunch of people asking me how to get things done in uh, in uh, ZVM and so I thought I'll, uh, I'll ask some friends for an account and uh, and start playing with ZVM so as you know ZVM is made up of two main components CP which is kind of the uh, nucleus our operating system and then everything is a virtual machine in, in ZVM or VM370 and one of the things you can do is log in as um, as, an, as an interactive user kind of like TSO in, in, in the MVS space and then start your own single user operating system similar in concept uh, to DOS or CPM of the old days which, which they were, those were single user operating systems uh, single users a single task operating systems actually back then um, and that's called CMS and CMS is just to, is a small operating system which allows users to interact with files and, and, and write utilities in Rex or use compilers such as PL1, COBOL etc um, and, uh, and so today we're going to be looking at how to do certain things uh, with CMS and to get started we have to use something useful and so I thought what we'll do today is we check out how to install uh, the um, what is it called Marist uh, uh, utility how to install a utility from Marist College uh, which tracks uh, virtual machines and allows to see what's going on inside those virtual machines and since most software for ZVM is packaged as in a VMARC uh, format. VMARC is an archival tool that allows to package all kinds of uh, files together, executables and and uh, help files and, and text files and and uh, even even small databases all in one file so that then it can be moved around so you could FTP it and then upload it to somewhere else. And, uh, and that's the standard way to distribute software for uh, VM and ZVM and and so first of all we need to learn how to uh, install VM Arc because every uh, VM or ZVM user should uh, have VM, VM Arc installed so then you can start uh, uh, sharing software uh, with each other um, so before we go and install track which is a useful tool we need to install VM Arc and uh, and so let's first uh, download VMark from from the website of IBM and I'll log in here and then we'll get this installed so I have an account here on uh, uh, IBM and let's get started okay so uh, once you log in um, you're on you're inside CMS if you're if you're a regular user uh, and so you can do set full screen on to work in a in a full screen environment if that's what you want or you can also go out again uh, so I put full screen on maybe a little bit easier to work this way and what we need to do now is to get this uh, downloadable from IBM uh, which we already downloaded and then um, upload it with I'm going to upload it I could do it with FTP but uh, a little bit too cumbersome I'll just do it with uh, with file transfer so to do that we go here we select the where is it uh, so here it is and we'll call it um, the mark module a we're going to put it in this case so now as you know um, disks have uh, letter named by letters kind of like in DOS C etc the only thing is that the disk letter is going to be attached at the end of the file not the beginning as it was in back in DOS days and then we're going to have binary and CMS chosen here because we're working CMS otherwise the commands are going to be issued wrongly and uh, and then we just upload it 
and that's done. So we can now show if it arrived. File list. And yes, it's there. And so now it tells us the IBM web page tells us that what we need to do is um, we need to uh, deblock it, block it correctly. So let's do that. So it is an A, so that's fine. Deblock for CMS, and let's execute that, and that's done. So now that we've got that done, and so now we have VMark installed, so I can just call it like this, and it gives me all the information I need how to run it. Um, it's a it's a CMS utility. So now that we have that, we need to download. Um, I'm running ZVM 6.3 here, so uh, so we need to get the old one downloaded. So let's download this. So that's done. Now let's see how we get this up. Transfer. It's called track old VMark. And we have to go choose it, track old. And we're gonna call it track VMark A. We're gonna put it in in mini disk A. Again, binary and CMS. And so this takes a while because it has to travel over the internet to Dallas. And that's done, pretty much. OK, so um, here are the disks that I have accessible in my system. It's in disk A, which is a small disk. It has 10 cylinders so uh, we could do now this command here to block it correctly and the command says uh, so we call the track vm arc a and again track a let's issue that and that's now probably done and so now we're going to have unarchive it so kind of like unzip it uh, track a and this is a way in cms to specify same so the file is always three parts the first name the type and the drive and so in this case we say it's going to be the, the this name track via mark and a and the equal sign means take the same one of the same type so this will be replaced by track and this equal sign will be replaced by vmark and a we specify for drive again so we could also just specify equal here again okay yep and that's done as you can see here um, it installs automatically a couple of different versions so i'm going to copy now uh, the version called track 60 through 3 into just a simply called track module so I don't have to type each time v63 uh, so um, so in the copy file track v63 uh, module track equal oh, I have to insert a here track a okay so that's done so now we can just uh, issue track command and we can say track operator or any any kind of uh, a virtual machine and uh, we will have to study what this track tool does and that's not the scope of this video we just um, we just wanted to uh, show how to use vmark to uh, install software uh, and in fact i found a software here on melinda varian which is a long-term member or was a long-term member of the zvm or vm370 team that originally wrote vm she has Zork here, 
and I spent yesterday an evening trying to install it but it doesn't install on ZVM it can I think only be installed on uh, VM370 uh, there is source here but that would require a Fortran compiler to compile it under uh, ZVM which I don't have um, because it's Zork is written in, in Fortran but if uh, anybody with a VM370 which can be easily obtained anywhere VM376 pack that's what you want to download uh, let's say here uh, not this one yeah I guess this is the one Robert O'Hara six pack yeah if you install this VM370 on your Windows or Unix or Linux uh, then the variant uh, Zork should install there. I don't have it right now here on my computer, but I have no doubt that Melinda uh, knew her job, knew what she was doing when she packaged it. And you can see here, it's is a package of Zork VMark. Uh, and so if we install that, we could unarchive it, and then we would have the source and the executables, um, which I tried yesterday. They don't run on ZVM. I'm sure they run on VM370. Uh, so this is how you, some very simple stuff on how to work with uh, with ZVM. I've, in one of the upcoming uh, videos, I'm gonna show how to IPL guest machines, um, how to define an IPL guest machines in ZVM so that we can uh, uh, look at that part because I think nowadays uh, one of the main uh, uses for ZVM is to run it as a hypervisor, not so much as an interactive tool as, as I just did now. Uh, in particular, we're going to see how to work with uh, Linux under under ZVM, um, which uh, on the mainframe you can have thousands and thousands of those images running, um, and so we'll see how to get this done. Um, I, I can't do thousands, but I think I can do one uh, or two uh, guest Linux machines. Um, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to do. And I can also IPL ZOS 2.3, uh, I think. Uh, which I have already running uh, in a separate video. So uh, this was all that we needed to do. Uh, by the way, here I have my uh, my Cloud MBS uh, console running, uh, and uh, right. Let's see how many users are logged in right now. Well, it's just me, but there's about 60, I don't know, 60, 70 users defined on our uh, MBS in the cloud. It's always up and running. And uh, I keep it nice and uh, tidy. Uh, let's see a uh, full. Yeah, the spool is starting to get a little full. I have a utility that once a day empties all output that's older than, I think, uh, three days or two days. And uh, we can see here that some users just uh, logged off just recently. Now I know who this person is and uh, this all runs just fine the people here executing jobs as you can see here somebody had a condition code 8 and then fixed it and then a condition code 8 so that's the console that's a typical MBS console so people are on here all the time um, and uh, instead of uh, keeping their own MBS up and running all the time they can do it here and for me the interesting part of this is that I have to maintain a production MBS instance and that's uh, that's fun and interesting uh, also a lot of people are on the discord channel I'll be putting a link in the description below this video where um, a lot of uh, people with uh, with a deep knowledge in uh, stuff uh, around the mainframe and the operating system of the mainframe help each other out to get things done um, and uh, there's always lively discussions there so I would encourage you to also join our discord channel and um, well, this machine is very lightly used as you can see here there's not much going on um, there is um, what is it um, this machine was IPL'd on about what is it, eight days ago still up and running fine before that I had running for about a month without IPL so everything runs just perfectly somebody had asked recently how to uh, uh, deactivate and reactivate a terminal that's stuck, which happens sometimes with the old VTAM versions. So, uh, for that, let's say 
um, I'm on terminal CUUC0. Let's uh, let's say I want to deactivate terminal CUU0C2. Then I will go here and I will type um, V net inact ID CUU0C2. Okay, and that's a very command. It will vary this terminal off. It will take sometimes up to five, six minutes to get it done. And then once it's done, later on you can activate it again by issuing the reverse command, which is which will now not be accepted, of course, because it's still deactivating it. But it's going to be very net activate id equals cuu zero c two. Because you see, failed because. It's being deactivated. So uh, we have to wait until it's deactivated, but then we can issue this command again. And I will have to do it because um, uh, people want to log in. By the way, one of the uh, things that I have to do here is, is give this MBS more terminals that were defined uh, with the standard distribution of TK4. I added uh, significantly more terminals, and there's a procedure for that. Um, which maybe I will explain in a, in a separate video, but not that many people have 60, 70 people logging in uh, in TSO to the same system, so maybe not that many people benefit from it. I'll, I'll think if I want to make a video or not. But in the meantime, uh, this has been uh, just a very, very positive experience with all these people logging in here. And um, I have all my standard utilities uh, that I've been uh, creating with the programming videos I had in the past several months uh, installed here. I can see it's on 9 and uh, I can uh, let's, uh, let's send it to User. Um, this is cancel. Okay, it's not not logged in. Terminal disconnected. Well, okay, then we just try it. But anyway, so uh, this is all a lot of fun. I hope you had uh, fun watching this video. Please consider subscribing to the uh, Moshex mainframe channel. And uh, thanks for watching. See you around soon. Thank you.